Right? People will say, oh yeah, I was uh, beaten with a board, but I was only beaten when I deserved it. You know, I was a terrible kid. You know, the parents would say, you know, things like, look what you made me do, right? You know, this is for your own good. This is, somehow I'm beating you for your benefit. Hey everybody, Steve Halley here with the Family Peace Initiative and welcome to the October edition of the Facilitator's Tool Chest Vlog. Uh, each month, I just try to put something out that hopefully stimulates some thought or you can reflect on for you know, your work in domestic violence intervention or in the helping field, wherever that might be. Uh, you know, I wasn't really sure what I was going to talk about today. And then I had my group last night uh, where we were talking about the river of cruelty. And inside the river of cruelty, you know, if, if you're familiar with our model, our river map has five boxes that uh, we just build lists inside of to help people understand their own river map and how cruelty has played a, had an impact on our own lives over the course of our lifespan. And in that list building uh, in the first box, the cruelty that we experience from the time we're you know, zero to 18 years of age when our brain is developing and impacting our relationships and our development. Uh, we started talking about corporal punishment. And, uh, you know, in, in the river of cruelty, corporal punishment is a quick way that kids are thrown into the river at a very early age. Uh, Alice Miller had talked about you know, if we're going to end cruelty, if we're really going to take a bite out of family violence and cruelty in the world, one of the easiest first steps would for us all to join together and eradicate and eliminate corporal punishment, uh, you know, beating of kids. Uh, so here we are making a list in our room of all the ways that uh, the participants in our room, there's about 12 participants, a couple of facilitators, and the list was just, you know, staggering. Uh, it, it almost always is. You know, there's a, the traditional beatings with belts or with the paddles, uh, but there's almost always these examples where someone says, oh yeah, I had to go out and pick a switch uh, that I, I had to bring back into the house for my parents to whip me with, really. Really an act of torture, right, and humiliation. You know, people talk about being whipped with extension cords and slashed with coat hangers. And uh, we have a young man who talks about being brutally beaten with a garden hose until he couldn't even walk back to the house. He would have to go out to the garage where his father would beat him with a garden hose. And then his father would just leave him laying there in pain. And uh, then the, he would kind of have to crawl back to the house and find his way to his bedroom where he could just lay down and recover. Uh, you know, the, the conversations about what people get hit with is always staggering. But it's the belief that comes with those that is what Alice Miller was most concerned about, and we hear it really loud and clear. Right? People will say, oh yeah, I was uh, beaten with a board, but I was only beaten when I deserved it. You know, I was a terrible kid. You know, the parents would say you know, things like, look what you made me do. Right? You know, this is for your own good. This is, somehow I'm beating you for your benefit. Uh, and then what people will do in the room is that they'll talk about how, you know, that they pass that on to their own kids, right? That, you know, that they think that somehow corporal punishment is going to help them and help their kids, the next generation, to be a kinder, gentler uh, group of people, which obviously is not true. And if you look at the people who are incarcerated around the United States, almost all of them have experienced some type of corporal punishment long before they were ever, you know, arrested for some kind of a crime against our society. And so what we like to do with that is just kind of raise these questions, like what does a kid have to do to deserve to be beaten with an extension cord or a paddle or a belt or whatever it might be? You know, what, how does someone deserve to be treated in such a manner? You know, uh, who gets to decide whether that beating is uh, the appropriate measure for the moment, right? You know, who does the kid have any say in that, or is that just something that the parents decide to do? 
And what we'd like to illustrate, you know, many times the, the group members will say things like, but yeah, but it worked for me. Look at me. I'm a you know, fine human being. And while they're sitting in the middle of a domestic violence intervention class, you know, while they're sitting in jail or wherever it might be, they kind of frame that the beatings help them, right? Which is so interesting that they would frame it that somehow it was for my own good, that somehow my parents did love me because they beat me. Right? And so we'd like to get those conversations out into the room, get those beliefs out into the room, and then ask them about attachment, which is the fundamental goal of parenting. Right? You know, kids who grow up with an attachment with their caretakers just do better in life. And as is evidenced by this, the, the damaged attachments that are inside of any domestic violence room, it's really hard to find someone who is in our groups due to using cruelty in relationship who has a secure attachment, right? They, I don't think they exist. People with secure attachments, I'm not sure that they have a pattern of domination and control. And so we start talking about, you know, how did that beating help you to feel connected to the person who was beating you? How did that help to create a stronger, better, more solid attachment? And it doesn't take long for the group to say, oh, that, that didn't happen, right? I didn't feel closer and more connected to my mother or my stepfather or my dad who was beating me. I was angry at them. I was resentful with them. I did stuff to get them back. I was, you know, in a power struggle with these people. Or I lived in fear of this person and I just tried to stay away from them because uh, I was afraid of what they might do. Right? All of those things are bad. Right. So on the bare minimum, when people, when we are afflicting with corporal punishment, we're, when we're parenting with corporal punishment, we are damaging attachments and we are inflicting a hostility and anger or a fear into our kids who we know we should be connecting with and building a solid, trusting, safe relationship with. And that conversation is very important to have inside of the group room. How does somebody deserve to be beaten. Is it when you break a window? Is it when you, you know, lose your school stuff? Is it when you don't clean your room when you are asked? Is it when you break the vase in the living room that was a family heirloom? And what has to happen for a young child to deserve to be beaten? That's kind of the birthplace of many of the violent beliefs that people have inside of their relationships as they get older, you know, that somehow I have the right to hurt you when you do something that I deem to be bad. Right? We adopt these beliefs of when is violence, abuse, and aggression appropriate, and when do I get to inflict it on you? Uh, and, you know, the final thing I'd like to say about that is that as you get into a conversation about about corporal punishment, about punishment versus discipline. You know, you can almost always get to this point where a group participant can identify when they decided they weren't going to take it. They weren't going to be beat anymore. They weren't going to be treated like that, like the person who is the weak, one down, inferior person. So for many of the people in the class, what they do is they adopt the other end of the teeter-totter which is, by golly, I'm not going to be the weak one. I'm going to be the one dishing out the punishment. I'm going to be the one in control. I'm going to be the one who is inflicting cruelty on you so that I can protect myself. And those are all important conversations that we want bubbling up in the group room. Corporal punishment is a doorway into people's trauma histories. And then we can connect their trauma histories to the cruelty that they use inside of their own relationships as adults. And I appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk about this. The group that I had and came out of last night is remarkable. We had some amazing conversations about the impact of cruelty long before they were ever cruel to anybody else. And I suspect that conversation continues next week. And I hope it might stimulate something in your group room. Good luck to you, and uh, I'll have something out again in November. Uh, have a great Halloween, y'all. Bye-bye.